find that it is rooted in some invalid belief. Somebody had, you know, we had bought into some belief before, but we now are clear. So, like the idiom goes in English, separating the grain from the chaff. You know, you, you see this chaff is removed and grain is retained. So, in careful observation, this you must negate is an unnecessary statement. In our commentaries we say, actually negating what is false happens. Retaining what is true happens. I give you certain things saying, please have your breakfast. And then you find that many things are put there. Some flowers are also there, out of you know, sentiment. You don't you just remove this understanding. This is flower. It is kept for some decoration. And this is the food to eat. I believe one Westerner came to India, Bombay or somewhere. And he was served a thali. It just really happened, somebody told me the other day. It was not flower or anything. He saw, he couldn't understand what is what. But uh, with full of, you know, being full of love or regard for the host, he carefully started eating. Later on, nobody watched how he was eating. He first took all the pickles. <laughs> then he just ate all the chutney. <laughs> he did not know that this goes with this and that goes with that. And somehow we bore with that, you know. So that's because there was no understanding. If there is understanding, then one deals with it. I made a mistake once. I was in Banaras in one meeting in a college, you know. I am, I am not used to pan. Banaras pan is famous. <laughs> they served pan after some refreshments and tea. And I, I first didn't understand that pan was actually packed in a leaf. That was rough and coarse. I, I did you know, I started eating it with that coarse leaf. <laughs> then the lady principal of the college said, Swamiji, <laughs> you remove that. You open it. Inside there is the real path. I made a fool of myself. Anyhow, that one. This one. Uh, therefore, a lofty teacher, no more, more precise, like J. Krishnamurti, never talks of this rejecting. He only talks, see, see. So people see it is very abstract. Whereas when you, when teachers on a lower level of communication say, see and reject the false, it comes as, you know, okay, there's something to do. We are so attached to doing something. And Krishnamurti being more precise says, just see, period. Rest of it happens. That is true actually. It's like a father said to his son, My son, you are now eight year old. Very soon you will be twelve. When you are sixteen, when you are eighteen, when you are twenty, you know, that is when you should get attracted to girls. Father doesn't have to say, When somebody is eighteen or twenty, the biology will work. <laughs> but one may say that. It's actually not required. At certain biological age, the boy gets attracted. In fact, what the father should say is, you should not get carried away by girls. <laughs> Attraction happens. So in real seeing, nothing more needs to be said. But we must understand what is real seeing, what is unbiased seeing, what is passive observation. What is true Sakshi Bhava? In Sanskrit there is a word, Sakshi Bhava. What is true watching? This has to be understood. Shall we get back to the last five verses? So, I deliberately stopped at twenty-five because twenty-four and twenty-five were one idea. Twenty-four and twenty-five Together were about the relationship between God and man. And the Advaita position was shared by Maharshi Ramana with all of us, saying, if you were to go to the essence, the pure nature, the true nature, removing all the frills, removing all the you know, other things that collect over the principle, 
stay with the basic principle. Who is Ishvara basically? Who is Jiva basically? Both are Sat and Chit and therefore there is no difference. Now come a few comments. This is like an appendix. The last few shlokas are like an appendix to a book. The main teachings in fact were over with 20. Shloka number 20. First nine, sorry, first three karma yoga, next six were bhakti yoga, 11 to 16 were raja yoga, 17 to 20 were vichara marga, a variation of jnana yoga. 26 now, atma sanstitihi swatma darshanam. Atma sanstitihi swatma darshanam. Atma nirdvayat, atma nishtata. Atma Sanstitihi Swatma Darshanam Atma Atma Nirdvayat Atma Nishtata Atma Nirdvayat Atma Nishtata Dana Varjita Dana Mastikim Natu Mantaram Dana Varjita Adnana Hina Chit Dana Varjita Adnana Hina Chit Dana Mastikim Natu Mantaram Though an appendix in some sense, though we, we almost implied that main stuff was already said, these are all some secondary stuff, these are not to be undervalued, these pointers are very valuable in their own right. It is said in the 26th shloka that we talk about seeing our own true nature. Swatma darshanam. Darshanam means seeing. But actually, if our own true nature were other than us, we could see it. Since by definition, our true nature is we ourselves. There is nothing like seeing where there could be a division of one sees and something is seen. So though the word darshana is used, that's okay for initial lessons. In essence, actually it is be the self, not to see, it is to be. So a whole lot of popular literature talks about achieving something. As you advance in philosophy, it's not about achieving, acquiring, collecting something which you didn't have, etc. It is rather letting go of baseless, baseless fear, letting go of you know, insecurity which has no foundation. It is letting go. Let go. The two words let go are golden words in higher philosophy. Prematurely, if they are given to somebody, that person will get messed up, you know. Santa Dhaneshwar, who wrote his commentary on Bhagavad Gita, I guess it is called Dhaneshwari, or Gyaneshwari. That is the commentary by Dhaneshwar on Gita. He wrote other Adamrata Anubhava and other works. At some place, I don't remember on which shloka, says, Somebody is crossing a river by a boat. When he crosses, he completes his journey. He leaves the boat and moves on, walks. He has reached the other village. Suppose halfway he thinks, eventually this boat has to be given up. And halfway in the river he gives up the boat. What will happen to him? So this giving up the boat has to be done at the right time not prematurely. So if you and I have a certain aspiration, more than aspiration, certain excitement, certain faith, certain inspiration, I want to know my true nature. I want to know who I am. And in our visualization, 
we think of our true nature as though it is something to be beheld, something to be, you know, witnessed, some, something will happen, some light will come, some sound will come. So, in our immaturity, so it's good, because you are inspired, doesn't matter. <clears throat> think of Brahma, Atma, Shiva, or Rama, or Krishna, or think of all of them as though they are up there. It's good to get going, but with maturity arising, in due course of time you say, oh, I have to correct my thinking. Nothing is outside. In simple language, all glory is inside. All that you are seeking is in yourself. That has to happen at the right time. Prematurely, if either one oneself imagines or somebody <laughs> gives to him or her that idea, it can be a bit, uh, you know, harmful. So, uh, this is on higher level. Swatma darshanam, though the word darshanam is given, seeing, is not so much seeing our, other than ourselves, it is being, atma sanstiti. And because atma, Again, this is the Advaita teaching. Atma is one in all. There is nothing like my Atma, your Atma, her Atma. Here I must make a hasty, I, mean, I, must, I must quickly make a clarification. When somebody dies, if you pray, may her Atma get peace. There that Atma is not the Advaita Atma. Unfortunately, the word Atma in Sanskrit is used on several levels. My favorite analogy is, Word New York stands for city of New York at times or the state of New York. Long ago there was Mysore state and Mysore city. In fact, for that matter, today also if you go to Mysore near Bangalore, there is Mysore district and Mysore city. So you ask somebody, you ask some you know, knowledgeable person, what is the population of Mysore? He will ask you, are you asking population of the Mysore district or Mysore city, right? Likewise, when we say in Hinduism, may, you know, Sadgati, we say, may that Atma get Sadgati, go to, you know, good Lokas. Because we don't have the idea of one life and then that Atma is in long wait until the day of judgment. That is so in Christianity and so on. There is some day of judgment which is going to come, maybe thousands of years from now. Then those Atmas will be told. They will be judged. And they will either be sent to heaven or hell. That is that concept. But in Hinduism, it is not about waiting somewhere. The Atma is moving. You know, to Swarga, maybe for some time, then to some other loka, then Patara, maybe some, and maybe reborn right in the neighborhood, the neighborhood. So, one Hindu once asked me, oh, being westernized, I often write when some death takes place in some place, you know, some friend's place, R.I.P. I write. And should I not write? Rest in peace, because in Hinduism it's not resting, it's moving. Gati, Gati means movement. I told him, no, 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 you can write R.I.P. but in bracket give a different expansion. It's not rest in peace in Hinduism, it is roam in peace. <laughs> Hello, jate raho. Go to heaven, go to, you know. And if between heaven and hell there is a special cruise or something, take the cruise experience <laughs> or special flight. You know, R.I.P. is acceptable to Sanatana Dharma, but R doesn't stand for rest. R stands for Rome. Now, coming back, Atma in the context of Punar Janma, in the context of Papa, Punya, etc., is not the Advaita Atma. The word is same, but what, how do you distinguish the Advaita Atma, the ultimate nature, is, you know, as we call it, call it already, it's the ultimate truth. That one in a million realizes. All others are at the level of this relative Atma. Therefore, sometimes we put the adjective, the individual soul, not the supreme soul. 
Every one of us is the Supreme Soul, but error, erroneous perception practically makes us the limited, you know, transmigratory Atma. So in Shankara Bhashya itself, let me tell that and complete that uh, digression, the word Sansari Atma is used at places, then there is the word Asansari Atma. Sansari means transmigrating, life to life. Sansarati moves. Asansari is that pure self has no movement. So this text that we have, we have taken up and we are discussing is about realizing that ultimate truth of our existence, Asansari Atma. And that Asansari Atma is one in all of us. Whereas the Sansari Atma is separate. Somebody's punya and papa will not be taken by somebody else. You know, everybody has their packet of karma, like their, their packet of punya and papa. There is a subhashita in, in Sanskrit, you know. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it says, 